Now you don't have to watch too many of my workshop videos to know that I am really big on dust collection. So that means that the surrounding air that I'm breathing is pretty clean. However, if you've watched a lot of my workshop videos, you'll have noticed that I sometimes forget to turn the system on. Now if you go and Google workshop air cleaner, you're going to come up with lots of ideas. Most of them are store-bought, and I have to admit, I was pretty close to buying one when Canadian Woodworker had one like this on sale not too long ago. But I have a real hard time bringing myself to buy something if I think I can make it, and have fun making it. Now here's one where somebody just took a 20 inch window fan and stuck a furnace filter in front of it. Now this is actually a good idea, but I want something a little bit more heavy duty than this. Now I want to back up a little bit here in my story. About two years ago, we upgraded to a high efficiency furnace. As most people know, they can't do anything with the old furnace that they take out. But the blower is generally still usable. Well, that's the kind of blower that I want, because it's generally very quiet, and it'll move a high volume of air in a hurry. And this is one of those blowers. I've checked it out, all five speeds work, and best of all, the price was right. Thank you, WeatherTech. Now before I can actually start making the enclosure, I better know the exact size of the blower. And before I start drawing it out on my computer, I gotta know what I'm gonna make it out of. And I use 2x4s way too much. I make stuff way too heavy duty. So no 2x4s here. Here I am in the drawing program, and I'm gonna try and design an enclosure here. I've uh, dragged a couple of pictures of the blower in. I'm gonna scale them to the exact size and it'll make it a lot easier to uh, design here if I know exactly what I've got to work with. Okay, this is the plan, and what you're looking at here is basically a box. It's going to be about five and a half feet high, about 30 inches wide, and about, oh, 18 inches deep. And if you take the side off, you can see the blower. Now this represents three 20 by 25 inch high efficiency furnace filters. That would give quite a large area. Now I know I could make this thing quite a bit smaller if I was to have one furnace filter on the back, one on each side, and then have the air just exit on the fourth side. But there's a good reason why I want it tall and all entering in one side. You'll see at the end of the video. Now the idea is that the blower will suck the air in on one side and blow it out the other. I'm trying to keep track of how much this thing is going to cost me to make, and so far I haven't spent a whole lot. I went out last night and I went to Princess Auto and I got uh, four casters. They were just under three dollars a piece, so that's say twelve dollars. And then I got these uh, six air cleaners from Rona, and uh, they were two for just under ten dollars, so that's thirty dollars altogether. And uh, then I got this lumber also from Rona, and it was a bundle of 10 slats for uh, $21.90. So altogether I've got, uh, well you do the math. Anyway, uh, let's check out this lumber here, see if they snuck any bad ones in on me. Those guys, I want a discount. These filters claim to be 20 by 25, but actually they're just a little bit under that. But who knows, maybe the next ones will be that big, so I have to make sure that I make the enclosure big enough to fit filters that are actually 20 by 25. Now I'm not making a high quality piece of furniture here, I'm just making a workshop air cleaner. And it's not that I couldn't do the mortise and tenon thing, I got this set up from Canadian Woodworker and it does a really good job on mortise and tenons, but I'm going to do the easy way. I'm just going to use biscuits. Anyway, this is as fancy as I get with uh, <laughs> furniture. And as you can see, like I said earlier, too much with the 2x4s.
Well, it's the next morning. About 14 hours has passed since I first glued these joints and I don't think they're going to move. So, let's see what we got here. And this is more than okay for just a workshop air cleaner. And now that the filter side is done, I can start on the blower side. Okay, here's the blower. Right now it's facing you. If it was running, it would be blowing right in your face. I left the side view in as a reference. Might help make it a little easier to understand. The frame on the blower side will be done the same way as on the filter side. I'll use biscuits again. It just has to be laid out in such a way to accommodate the blower. Now I did the frame for the blower side pretty much the same way as I did the filter side, except I had to do it in two stages. This section here I had to do first. Reason being is because of the biscuits it was going to be too hard to get everything all glued together at the same time. And now is a good time to check and make sure that I got the blower mounting bracket the right size before I get everything all glued together. Now I just got back from Rona and as well as the plywood I also bought a three-way switch. Now I already had several ordinary switches that would turn the motor on and off but because that blower motor was a multi-speed I wanted to take advantage of that. I wanted to rig it up so it would have a high and a low. Now because of the oddball shapes of the three sides I had to buy two sheets of plywood, but as you can see I have a lot left over, so the bottom line on that bill doesn't really honestly reflect the total cost. So I guess I got about another 20 bucks invested in this thing. At the end of the video I'll try and give you a breakdown of how much I spent. Speaking of end of the video, this is the end of part one.